Be blessed. I am Father Jeffrey Waldrop, and it is an honor, as always, to be a voice of he who is the voice. The 15th Sunday now of Ordinary Time. Just welcome here to this video. If you're new to this video, it's an honor to have you celebrating. If you're returning, God bless you. This is a, gonna be a wonderful celebration today. Because today, you know, we're gonna be looking at the scriptures I think are calling us to look at. Why do some people get it and other people don't? You know, with the political unrest, the, the racial unrest, with the economic unrest, with the unrest throughout the world, you know, the spotlight gets on us. The spotlight is on you. And do you get it or do you not? So today as we gather to celebrate this uh, mass together, as we gather to celebrate this spiritual communion, let us just take time to focus ourselves, to just get rid of all distractions, turn the ringer off your cell phone. Matter of fact, put yourself, whoop, no, you may be watching this video on your cell phone, so you better keep your cell phone there if you're watching this video on the cell phone. But let's just get rid of all those distractions, you know, because there's a lot of distractions around us when we're at home. And let's just focus on this awesome mass and the message that the Lord has for you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. And the Lord be with you and with your spirit. And as we gather to celebrate this 15th Sunday now of Ordinary Time, let us begin as always as we pause to ask for the Lord's gracious mercy and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of all of our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down, and do not return there till they are watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. 
You have visited land and watered it. Greatly have you enriched it. God's water courses are filled. You have prepared the grain. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. Thus have you prepared the land, drenching its furrows, breaking up its clods, softening it with showers, blessing its yield. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. You have crowned the year with your bounty and your paths overflow with rich harvest. The untilled meadows overflow with it and rejoicing close the hills. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. The fields are garments with flocks and the valleys blanketed with grain. They shout and sing for joy. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed for us. For creation awaits with eager expectation the revelation of the children of God. For creation has made subject to fertility, not of its own accord, but because of the one who subjected it, in hope that creation itself would be set free from slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that all creation is groaning and labor pains even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves as we await for adoption the redemption of our bodies. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. The seed is the word of God. Christ is a sower. All who come to him will have life forever. Alleluia, alleluia. And the Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. On that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat down, and the whole crowd stood along the shore. And he spoke to them at length in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground, where it had little soil. It sprang up at once because the soil was not deep, and when the sun rose, it was scorched, and it withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it. But some of the seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit a hundred or sixty or thirtyfold. Whoever has ears ought to hear. Well, the disciples approached him and said, Why do you speak to them in parables? He said to them in reply, because knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven has been granted to you, but to them it has not been granted. To anyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich. From anyone who has not, even what he has will be taken away. This is why I speak to them in parables, because they look, but they do not see, and hear, but they do not listen or understand. Isaiah's prophecy is fulfilled in them, which says, You shall indeed hear, but not understand. You shall indeed look, but never see. Gross is the heart of this people. 
They have hardly hear with their ears. They have closed their eyes, lest they see with their ears and hear with their, as at least they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and be converted and I will heal them. But blessed are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear. Amen, I say to you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, but did not see it, and hear what you hear, but did not hear it. So hear then the parable of the sower. The seed sown on the path is the one who hears the word of the kingdom without understanding it. And the evil one comes and steals away what has sown in his heart. The seed sown on rocky ground is the one who hears the word and receives it at once with joy, but he has no root and lasts only for a time. When some tribulation or persecution comes because of the word, he immediately falls away. The seed sown among the thorns is the one who hears the word, but then worldly anxiety and the lure of riches choke the word and it bears no fruit. But the seed sown on rich soil is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields a hundred or sixty or thirtyfold. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Why do some people get it and others do not? I say that like in coming to Mass and in, in, um, uh, celebrating this spiritual communion through this video. Uh, some people get it, some people are open, and some people just absorb everything that God is doing and is about around them. But then others... <laughs> They may not even come to Mass, or they may not even watch uh, uh, one of these videos on the Sunday to celebrate spiritual communion. Some people come, are watching this video, and they're just kind of looking around, and they're kind of bored, you know. <laughs> I saw one person, they came to church, and they were so ready to get out of church a couple weeks ago, their leg was just like, they were just, it's just shaking, you know, and it was just like they were ready to bolt in any given moment, you know. And I'm not passing judgment on anybody. I'm just saying, why do some people get it and others don't? I was talking to a couple a while back and they were talking about how they didn't realize that they were in a rat race, but they were just going and going and going. They both are, have, are two professionals, have two full-time jobs. And on the weekends, they were taking their kids to do uh, special uh, um, traveling sports. And, um, and then they would come back again on Monday morning and just go right back into the whole um, uh, rat race, they called it. And then COVID-19 slowed us all down. And they said they did not realize how out of control their lives were. And so they were telling me what they have decided to do to try to keep them from just going all crazy again, you know, that they have pledged to one another that every night that they're going to pray together. So they get together before they cut the lights out, they get their the little living faith book, you know, that daily little meditation book, and they read that meditation. And then they said they hold hands and they say a prayer together. And they said that's made all the difference in the world in their life. Why do some people get it and others don't? Well, I think the scriptures today are reminding us um, that God is constantly unfolding his graces in our lives. And before those who have open hearts um, it's like they have rich soil and that, that grace of God just grows and continues to expand and be a part of their lives. For when their hearts are open, as we heard in that Psalm 65 in the responsorial Psalm today, 
when we have open hearts, God's word can visit the land of our heart and water those stony hearts with living waters. But as the rain and the snow of God's graces pours down upon us, as we heard the prophet Isaiah say in that first reading chapter 50, in um, the prophet Isaiah chapter 55, Jesus reminds us in that gospel reading in Matthew chapter 13 that God's graces, his words, his word falls upon all of us. But some of us are more receptive than others. Boom. There's the answer. Why do some people get it and others don't? Well, some people get God's hopes and dreams and desires because their life is a fertile soil, if you want to say. They build their life around prayer. They build their life around sacrifices. Think of the couple I was just talking about. They had made their heart in so fertile soil of God's graces. But other people's lives, as we heard in the parable, with Jesus' image, their life is a little more stony, you know. They don't have time for the Lord. Their hearts are hardened. Some people's lives are thorny, and they have God's grace, but they just reach up and they end up choking off God's grace in their lives. And some people's heart and soul is just rocky. God is kind of part of their lives, but not a part of all of their lives. So why do some people get it and others don't? Simply, some people want it and others don't. The ones who want it are willing to put the energy and the time and the energy and do what they need to do for the Lord, but the people that don't get it, Sometimes God is, they, they just don't invite the Lord in a lot of things that they don't do, uh, and the things that they do in their lives. So as we come before the Lord celebrating the many ways that God just showers constantly his blessing or his word upon all of us, constantly showering upon you. In your life, are you too busy for the Lord? Are you doing what it takes to be open to the Lord? Are you missing the point altogether? Are you working hard to get it? Why do some people get it and some people don't? It all depends on how hard we're willing to work to be open to the Lord. And let us now celebrate the many ways that God is present to us and continually unfolds himself before us as we profess together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us now turn to pray to God the Father, whose word has been sown in our hearts. The church exists in order to evangelize, in order to sow the seeds of God's word in human heart. May those who sow be themselves fertile and have productive soil. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those whose lives are full of distraction, that learning to give space and attention to God and his word, they may bear harvests of peace and goodness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
For those who soap and reap in the most literal sense, may farmers be blessed, be safe in their work, have favorable weather, and may God bless them with good yields and harvests. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask the Lord to strengthen those who are ridiculed on the count of their faith. May they grow strong in witness and stay on the path of discipleship. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for wisdom and guidance for the staff, parents, and students of Annunciation Catholic School and all schools that you represent. As we enter the new school year, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Your word, Lord, remains forever. May it bear a rich harvest in us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. And pray now, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. Look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you and in joyful celebration, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For through him, with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory of yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. And behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
<clears throat> Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go now and proclaim the gospel with our lives. Thanks be to God. The 15th Sunday of Ordinary Time. As one friend of mine said to me not too long ago, Father, you are stepping on my toes. You know, we, we were stepping on toes today, you know, as we looked at do we get it or do we not? You know, are we preparing our hearts and our souls to be open to what God has in store for us or are we just doing our own little thing? Today we heard how important it is to make, to pray and to sacrifice and to, to have that soil of our hearts and our souls constantly open to all that the Lord has in store for each of us. Really, it's not that hard. It's just taking that time to have our hearts open to what the Lord has in store for us. And lastly, as always, we have to remember the virtual collection. Yes, it is that time again, we're just reminding ourselves of our financial stewardship. Some of you have told me that you just kind of out of sight, out of mind, you know, that since you're not in church, church, you just don't think about giving as much. So we have to remember that we still have our bills here that of what we're working at to do our ministry, to be able to provide this video. So remember the three ways that you can give. You can drop off your offering to the church. You can go to our parish website and give online, or you can mail into the church you're offering to be able to help support us in what we do and what we're about. And if you are belong to another parish, don't forget to give to them and to support your own parish in what y'all do and what you're about in your community. So as we go into this next week, let us realize and let us make sure that we get it. This is Father Jeffrey Waldrop, and it is an honor to be a voice of he who is the voice. <laughs>